Yeah, and you two spoons, please. Yeah. Boom. And yeah, spoons are in the drawer, but the milk mm -hmm. is in the fridge. This one. Uh, how about the other milk? That see that pink box? When I left the, the Navy, I come over here and then I went on to the London Police. And I was there for what, 12 years was it? 35 years. 35 years was it? Wow, 35 years. When Roger was ready to retire, um, I noticed that there were some changes in his personality. So with some testing, we found that uh, this was back in 2005, he was then diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. I was concerned about what the future was going to bring and how fast disease was going to go. But Roger has a wonderful sense of humor, so many times some of the stupid things that happen just become a funny thing that happened. So we've managed all right so far. The number of people that are going to be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease is increasing by huge amounts and will continue to increase over the next decades because the number of people that are entering their 70s and 80s continues to increase. If we don't do something to alleviate the, the symptoms of the disease or stop the progression of the disease, we're going to have an enormous crisis on our hands in terms of helping all of those people and their families. So I'm part of the Imaging Research Group at Robarts, which is one of the largest multidisciplinary integrated imaging development groups in North America. And my work specifically focuses on the development of magnetic resonance imaging markers that could be used for early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So we will have ways of identifying people that we know in five years or ten years will go on to get the disease but that we can intervene now to, to stop the progression and stop the, the, um, the destruction of the brain that occurs as the disease progresses. The research that, that my laboratory is doing is very much looking at cellular and molecular questions in uh, the, the neurobiology of the brain. We can take the lessons that we learn from that and then be able to ask questions in the clinical population and see the transition points and the trajectories that occur that, that change from somebody who's in a normal, a healthy aging situation through to someone who now is starting to show very early signs of a neurodegenerative disease. My name is Dr. Stephen Pasternak. I'm a neurologist. I run a cognitive neurology clinic at Parkwood Hospital, and I have a laboratory at Robarts. For me, it's an important mix. Um, seeing patients in the clinic gives me focus and sort of keeps me grounded, but really, the clinic isn't where the answers are. The answers are in the laboratory. We have basically a number of projects spanning basic science through translational, through diagnostics. There are many, many good ideas being tested now. At our society at all levels, I think we're starting to understand that this tidal wave of patients coming at us is going to be a major challenge for our society. The numbers for Alzheimer's disease are quite alarming because every 60 seconds, every minute, there is a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease in North America. We focus on two specific areas, which is the hippocampus and, and the uh, cerebral cortex, because those are the areas uh, related to uh, learning and memory, and it's the first areas that are affected in patients with Alzheimer's disease. We hope that in these next 10 years we can really contribute to find something to postpone or, or retard the disease, uh, if not to uh, prevent it. By looking and researching, we're going to find that it's a lot more medical than just a comedy of errors. And I think that's an important. Yeah, and we've got a lovely daughter, and she's got a little uh, 
girl now, and then that's her name. Kenzie Lee. No, but it's, it's, life is good. It really is. <laughs>